All right, unfortunately for me, I can't balance this wheel because the axle here is, the axle bolt is too small in diameter for my, my wheel balancer. So I have this wheel balancer in here, Tachyon. This thing is meant for street bikes and this, this right here is too, is too big. The diameter is too big. So uh, I just can't balance this thing. And it sucks. And on, my, uh, on my smaller scooter, I didn't worry about balancing it because the wheels are so small. When the wheels are so small, you don't care about balancing. And then, and it comes, you know, and the, and those smaller wheel scooter from the factory, they come without any balance weights. But this one, the wheel is big enough where it does have a balance weight. But again, I can't do it uh, unless I take it to like a, a shop that has a smaller axle thing. And uh, and I, I don't know if they do or not. Um, and I, and I don't want to go to the shop and I'm just like, I just, I'm, I'm just gonna throw the, the new wheel or the new tire, I should say, on here. So before I do that, let me, uh, Wipe the uh, the bead clean, um, both top and bottom bead, where the rim is, I should say. So I'm wipe the whole entire rim. Actually, let me start at the valve stem, because I won't know where I started and where I stopped. Okay, wipe it down. I'm actually gonna work from the other side. Uh, oh, I should work from the side just because the the the, uh, the road is out of my way, so it's a bit easier. Uh, but actually, I'm gonna do it from this side, just because this side is the the less visible side. So just in case if I uh, if whatever uh, you know I I, I uh, nick the the rim or whatever and it doesn't you know. It's not as noticeable. Let's get my tire. This is my new tire. Uh, these are the Pirelli Angel scooter tires. Uh, I, I let it sat in the sun for, for a little bit, you know, for like an hour or so. So it's nice and warm. Tires are always much easier to remove and install when they're nice and warm. Um, so I have to look at my uh, the orientation of my tire. So I think the uh, the rotor is on the left side of the bike, the port side or the uh, um, the uh, you know the left hand side. So I have to look at the spinning. So it's gonna that means it's gonna be spinning that direction. So looking at my tire here, I have to spin it in the same direction. So right here is I spin this way. So I have to flip it so that way it's like that. Yep, so it's like that. So let's look for the weight, weighted dot. This one doesn't have a weighted dot. You know, normally a tire will have like a dot, like an orange or red dot on here, or yellow dot. And this one doesn't have it at all. There's no dot. So I don't know where to start. So I'm assuming because it's a more modern tire. It's, you know, modern tires are very well balanced compared to uh, older tires, older design tires. Even though the tire, you, 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 if you buy it and it's, and it's new, it's brand new. But if it's an older design, it was, that means it was still made the older way. And it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't designed properly. Well, not no, let me. No, that, that, that's not correct. It wasn't uh, made to to modern day standards. So uh, so what happens with that is the uh, is the uh, is the tires aren't very well balanced because of that. But on on new tires, uh, because they're new uh, and and the way they're made is modern more modern, the technique that they use with the machines that they use, it's modern versus using older technique, older machines. Uh, uh, modern tires will, will uh, usually are very well balanced, so they don't need a, uh, they don't need a the balanced dot. Let's see, let me look at the orientation of this thing again. So my, this is the port side, so the tire is spinning 
spin in that direction. That means this tire needs to spin in this direction. And front wheel spin that direction. So that's right. So that means I need to loop the back side. So this side here. And loop this side of it. So I'm looking at my my uh my uh my V here, make sure it's clean. So it's not like a bunch of dust and dirt. Usually when it's brand new it's it's okay. But I, I bought this tire several months ago. So it's been sitting out out in the in the in the uh, storage for like several months and it got all dusty and and spider webs all over it so all right keep my tire lube dab a little bit of tire lube on here now just make sure you got the tire lube that makes a world of difference huge difference actually i like this this new tire lube i'm getting instead of this instead of spraying soapy water this one is actually Especially with this dabbing, uh, 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 whatever this thing is called, it makes it so much easier. It's like nice and clean, and it's not spray everywhere, and it's makes it so much nicer that way. Okay, let's uh, switch this back to the rim. Okay, so the loop side is going to be downwards with the rim. Again, there's no weight, weighted spot. I don't see any weighted spot anywhere, so I'm just gonna just put it in. I'm not concerned about it. Uh, let's see that my stem is over here. I'm gonna flip it so that way the stem is away from me. Because I'm gonna put this side on first like this. Just basically push it down. And if, it, if, you, if the tire is nice and warm and soft, and, uh, and you looped it, it should almost pop all the way on. There it goes, see, popped all the way on by itself. Easy peasy. Okay. Now, I need to loop the front side, or this, this top side now. Let's see, let me wipe this first. All right, so loop the, loop this, uh, this uh, top side. And you notice I, I don't just loop the the face of the bead where where the um, where the uh, you know not just the face of we would have tied wall is but also the inner diameter part of it as well so that doesn't get hung up. So I think I'm done with my tire lube. I don't think I need any more. So I can close up the bottle. Close that up. Okay. So again, my valve stem is over here. So I'm gonna start off on the on the other side. And the reason that is, you remember, the rim is you know the rim is like this, and the tire mounts on like that. So the valley in here is the lowest spot. You want the bead once once it goes in, you want that bead to sit in the valley here, so that way you get more or more slack. And if the if the uh, valve stem is right there, it's a little nub right there, so it doesn't sit all the way in. So that's why you always start at the opposite end. Okay, so let's get this side in here so that way I can push this in. Usually you push the first few inches in or so. Let's see if I can do this. Again, that's, that's it for the tire. It's nice and warm and soft. Okay, about half. And right here I'm pushing this side because I'm pushing the, the tire back into the bead into the valley so it gives me more slack. So I should be able to get about halfway, maybe slightly more. Man, I wish I had the actual thing. It would be so much easier with the actual piece. So I think I went a little past halfway already. Okay, I'm good there. Yeah, I went just past halfway. Uh, rim savers. So I didn't bring it as close to you can to where the bead stopped. Actually, I should get my other room I have, I have four of these things. I should get the fourth one here, but I'll probably be okay, I think. With three. Okay. So I'm gonna have one, 
one lever here hold this down so that way it doesn't move so that or the bead doesn't uh, doesn't pop back out so it looks like my feed lube is actually kind of drying up a little bit that's interesting i thought they stayed i thought it stayed wetter longer than that So basically you slip this underneath. So this is usually why I prefer to use the do this with the disc on the bottom. So that way the disc is not in my way. So now the disc is actually in my way at my tire level. But again the, the, the disc is on the, uh, the the dirtier side or the uh, the less the less pretty side of the of the wheel. So that's why I, I, I chose this side and said. But normally if you have like a dual disc or dual disc bike, if they were a dual disc bike it doesn't really matter, but if you have a bike where it's the other way around uh, you want to have the uh, oops, again I'm pushing the bead down into the valley to give me more slack always always go back to that make sure that it's down in the valley and of course for a moment that it wasn't in the valley it was actually up above uh, Without the uh, oh shit, it sucks without the uh, the actual thing. Let me put this on the ground. This thing is way too high for me. Let me put it on the ground so it's easier for me. Oh. Okay, that should be a little bit easier for me. I could uh, kind of stand, stand over it instead of trying to. Oops, shit. Oh no, my thing is drying up. I guess I do need some more tire loop. It's drying up, it's drying up. I didn't think it would dry up so fast. the lever oh my other spoon shit oh, damn it see that change in pace just from having to put things down and getting the floor mat uh threw me off Push the tire down into the valley over here. It's not in the valley over here on this side. Make sure it's pushed down into the valley so it gives more slack. Okay, get more slack. Okay. Let's see. Try to get this last bit of uh, rim saber at the very end here. There. I actually put my feet right here. Let's bring this in. So this is the hard part. Now there's gonna hardly be any space over here. So you might have to kind of help lift the uh, that feet up. Sometimes you might have to actually give it slack from this end just to give you some space down here. Lift up the feet a little bit. Get it under the rim saver. Okay, it's under the rim saver right there. Okay. Back through, put my feet there, put this back through. Now, this last one, there we go. Okay, there's some acrobatics there, but you know, that's, that's what it takes to get it done, yeah, without scratching up the rim. At least, I don't think I scratched up the rim, but I see some scratches here, but I don't think that's for my, for my spoon. And it's just on the road, from the road. Okay, so now we're good. Oh. Uh, I, think this, uh, I think the other side was a little bit harder because this side 
what's in seeding in the valley. If both sides, both beads see, see in the valley, you get the most slack and it's the easiest way to, uh, to do it. Okay, so now it's just a matter of pumping it up. Hopefully it's sealed enough where I could just pump it up the way it is and, uh, and I don't have to be concerned about not seeding the bead. Let's see if that works or not. Little air compressor. Compressor here, my valve stem is still in. Oh, it's, it's in, I put it in you know, off camera. Let's see if this works. Nope, it's not working. So you get, I'm not sure, you, get, you guys can hear it, but I can hear it. I can hear the air leaking out. It sounds like it, come, it was coming from the backside. So this, this is where it's important where you have to make sure that the tire all the way around is nice and even and uniform. So on this side, it's actually down more in the valley, and this side is actually up above the valley. Uh, let's see if you guys can see the difference. Let me, uh... So right here, it's more down in the valley. See, there's that space here. And over here, it's higher up, so there's more space. So you need to basically make it so that way, all the way around, it's all uniform, all the same. So that's the that's the hard part to keep it keep it that way, because the tire doesn't want to, sometimes, it, Sometimes it, it, it goes in, it stays that way, but lots of times it doesn't. So I need to push the side down a little bit. So it gives this side a little bit of slack. So it looks pretty even. Okay, now it's even on this side. Kind of flip around and do it on the other side. Be, and you have to be mindful that you don't disturb the, the, the previous side that you just did. So this side right here is more in the valley. And up along here is out, out of the valley. So I'm gonna push this side down a little bit. Side down a little bit, over here down a little bit. Give this side some stack. And actually, yeah, I can kind of, I kind of do this and kind of roll it outwards, so so it goes up a little bit higher. All right, so like this, right there. Okay, that's pretty close. I think I got it. Let's double check the other side real fast. Oh, it changed again. So sometimes you gotta do this several times. And again, it helps when the when the tire's warmer. I only left my tire out there for like, you no, know, probably less than an hour, so it didn't fully soak in the heat from the sun. So unfortunately, if, it had, if I had more time on it, it would actually soak more heat in the sun and it stays warmer and stays more uh, more soft and easy, easy to, uh, to work. This side, so that's still pretty good. Still slightly more on this end, but let's see it now. Nope, I can still hear air coming out from somewhere on this side. So if that doesn't work, the other thing you could do, you, you could spray soapy water along the bead. I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm gonna save that for the, my last resort. What I'm gonna do instead is uh, using the tire loop Again, I'm gonna dab it and, and use the tie loop as my seal. Hopefully this works. I've, never, I've actually never done this this way before. I can even get the tire loop in there. That's the problem is getting this tire loop in there. One side. Okay, hopefully that's enough. Let's try it now. Let's see. Yep. 
Here it goes. Nope, pop both sides. Good. Yeah, it was actually leaking somewhere around right here, and you can actually see the fluid come out. It was leaking around right here. That's the reason why why I actually turned it. Usually, wherever it leaks, if you turn it to the bottom and you kind of push on the, from the top of the tire, that will whatever gap there is, it closes the gap, and it, and it seals. And you heard both pops, right? On, or pop on both sides. So, so I'm good. All I need to do now is uh, check the tire pressure. I don't think it's high enough. I think it's only. I didn't pump it up that much, so let me pump it up a little more. So I think it's supposed to be, uh, I can't remember what the pressure is now, 27 or something like that, or 30 or something. Let me look at it real fast. Tire pressure code is 25. 25 in the front, 33 in the rear. So 25, 33. Okay, so this is basically 25. <sighs> That's at well, 40, 47, so it needs to be 25. I'm gonna leave it at uh, I'm gonna leave it at 28 because the tire is actually not cold right now. So I'm gonna wait until tomorrow morning and recheck the tire pressure. So I'm gonna leave it slightly overinflated because it's kind of warm. Uh, it, so I might actually have to add the tire. I have to add pressure to me, bring it up to 30. So that way I don't have to add pressure tomorrow. All I, all I need to do is uh, tomorrow morning, all I, all I need to do is, uh, is take off the pressure. I'd rather take off pressure than add pressure. And the reason why I'd rather take off pressure than add pressure is it's a little bit more accurate, I think. Because when you take off pressure, it stays cool. But if you, if you increase pressure, it, it warms up. So, so yeah, so I'm gonna leave it at 30 and tomorrow morning I will, uh, well not tomorrow morning, but tomorrow, yeah, in the morning, mid morning or so, I will check the tire pressure again. And, and the tire pressure, it says 25 and that's 25 at, at basically at room temperature, you know, that's 68 degrees uh, or 70 degrees, 68, 70 degrees is at 25. So for every, uh, I, I, I find on, on tires for tire pressure for every 10 degrees, the tire pressure will will change about one or uh, about one psi, yeah. So give or take uh, one one point something, you know. Give or take one, one, uh, one psi. So, so this tire is definitely above sixty eight degrees right now. It's uh, it feels like at least eighty degrees, uh, maybe even more, maybe even eighty five. Uh, so that's it. That's you know front tire mounting. Again, I can't I can't balance it because my axle size here is too small to fit on my my balancer. So here's the stock OE uh, factory from the factory uh, wheel balance. I just left it on there. Um, it's usually the thing that's usually off balance. It's usually the wheel, not not the tire itself, especially modern tires. So I'm just gonna leave it there, see how it goes. If it you know if, if I get shaking or whatever in the front, then that means the the balance is really off. I could. Uh, you know, I could take this to the shop. I could take it off and take it to the shop and have them balance it for me. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.